everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector. It is Saturday morning, and Saturday Showcase today is going to be my top 25 Hall of Fame autographs. I teased this earlier uh, a couple days ago, yesterday maybe, but I realized what a foolish idea this was as I began to try to sort through and pick out my 25 top autographs. And what criteria do I use? Because I have... Um, cards, I have Perez Steels, I have Customs, I have Posters, I have Cuts, I have every different kind of checks, you name it, kind of um, medium that Hall of Famer autographs could be on, and how do you choose, how do you distinguish, and so what I did was I took, you could do it by value, you could do it by a whole lot of things, and what I did and decided was that I would Simply pick out 25 of the, so it's a combination value, coolness factor of the item, who the player was. So like Willie Mays is on here, he's not necessarily valuable. Um, and I picked out kind of my favorite Willie Mays because it's Willie Mays. So there's just a myriad of reasons why these different autographs made it into my top 25. And it's, I added it all up. I went and kind of looked up current values of all of these, and it's just over $25,000. So that makes it kind of neat that my top 25 is worth a little bit over $25,000. If you were to go out and try to duplicate this list, that's what it would cost you just about. So um, here we go. I'm going to show everything kind of this way and let you check it out. Uh, show it, flip the camera around so you can see them all better. Some of them are bigger pieces, smaller pieces, so we'll do the best we can, and I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. Thanks a lot. Hang on. So this is a beautiful autograph of Wahoo Sam Crawford, and it's a beautiful uh, 3x5 card, index card here. I love how this works. I love the red ink. I love how bold the autograph is. I even love the fact that he wrote desist. So this must have been a person that had pestered him about autographs, sending him through the mail or whatever. And he's like, cut it out, stop it. And that just makes me laugh that uh, he would do that. And this came back a near mint to mint eight on the PSA DNA autograph scale. I don't know what makes it an eight. Um, it looks pretty bold and beautiful to me, but I'm always perplexed by how PSA grades their autographs. It never makes a whole lot of sense to me. But there's uh, Wahoo Sam Crawford. Next up, we've got this beautiful first day cover signed by Hall of Famer Eddie Collins. Uh, just an amazing piece here. It is celebrating the first century of baseball 1839 to 1939 you can see eddie's bold signature there on the left along the top uh it, it's basically a like a cachet kind of thing it's got a 1939 postmark on it from cooperstown and got the awesome century uh commemorative stamp up on the top right uh you'll see later i have a piece like that as well that has that stamp on it so Eddie Collins. So here's a great item, something that kind of makes my top 25 just mainly for the coolness factor of it. And what this is, this is a check written by the New York Yankees, uh, signed at the bottom right by their owner, Jacob Rupert. And over on the left in the little stub area is Ed Barrow, who is also a Hall of Famer for being an executive for the Yankees. And so a lot of things going on on this item. First of all, the beautiful, you know, fountain pen signatures that are on it are really cool. Um, it's from the New York Yankees checkbook. It's definitely got some issues with it in terms of, you know, you got the old time bank you know, processing holes punched all through it, showing that it was paid. Uh, but one thing that's really neat is the 
date of the check, if you look up on the top right, is in the middle of the 1927 season. The Yankees were perhaps one of the greatest teams of all time in 1927. So to have a check from that year for that team, signed by the owner, the general manager, both of which are Hall of Famers, just all speaks to how kind of neat this item is and the history behind it. So that matters a lot to me when I look at things is history and, you know, just again, coolness factor and what's going on and with it. So there you go. Jacob Rupert and Ed Barrow. Next up, we have Hank Greenberg, uh, first baseman for the Detroit Tigers for years and years. And this autograph is just beautiful to me because it's one of my favorite sets of all time to have autographed, and that's the 1983 Donruss Hall of Fame Heroes. This will not be the last card you will see from this set in this video, but it's the first one. And Hank Greenberg has such a really cool, unique autograph. I love that. I love that this is great at a Gem Mint 10, so lots of neat stuff going on here. Greenberg's one of the greatest players uh, of all time for the Tigers. So there you go, Hank Greenberg, 83 Donruss Hall of Fame Heroes autograph. Next up is Ed Walsh, a uh, great pitcher uh, back in the early part of the 20th century. Just an amazing Hall of Famer, won 30 games in a season. Really hard autograph to get. Uh, you know, he, he's tough to find. I mean, this is a, you know, $400 autograph right here. And I just love the way his signature is. I uh, love the simplest simplicity of the postcard that it's on, the index card. So Mr. Ed Walsh in a near mint to mint eight autograph. Next up, it's one of the most inspirational players ever to play in Major League Baseball, and it's Roy Campanella, catcher for the Dodgers. Uh, what an amazing guy he was. Uh, such an amazing catcher, won several MVP awards, was just dominant in his position back in the 50s, and Negro League player who came to the Major Leagues just and blew it away. Uh, I, Love his autograph here, not because it's necessarily pretty, but what it means, this is a post, he had a stroke, I'm sorry, a uh, car accident, and was had some severe, uh, you know, brain damage and things that caused him to have to be in a wheelchair the rest of his life, and so he had a very strange way to sign stuff. It was basically mechanically, um, he would sign it, but someone would kind of help the pen kind of move because uh, his dexterity wasn't fine enough to be able to do that. So but it's a legit Roy Campanella autograph. It's just post-accident kind of thing. And so you kind of put Roy Campanella autographs into pre- and post-accident. But this is post-accident, but it's beautiful on this Perez Steel. And if I move it up here, you can see that it's a Mint 9 autograph. And I agree that it's a Mint 9 autograph. So... Just a beautiful piece. This will not be the last Perez steel you see in this video either. So Roy Campanella. I told you it wouldn't be the last one you see. In fact, the next autograph to show off is Mr. Jolton Joe DiMaggio. Uh, one of the greats of all time. Legendary player. Uh, love his autograph. I have it. several of them. And uh, love showing his autograph off on any item that I have. It looks particularly cool on this Perez Steel. If I scroll up or show you that this is also graded by PSA DNA, it's also a Mint 9 in their opinion autograph, although it looks pretty juicy to me. Uh, so Mint 9, PSA DNA, Joe DiMaggio. Next up is this beautiful Harry Heilman autograph. I just love the way his signature looks. If you don't know who he is, you need to go look him up. Uh, one of the greatest players ever. And Harry Heilman, 
Hall of Famer for sure. Well, all these are Hall of Famers, right? But look at those beautiful H's that he made for his first and last name. The looping signature and incredibly gorgeous. Uh, again, I don't know why this is a near mint to mint eight. It looks perfectly centered. You know, I don't wish I knew. I wish they gave us a, a reasoning. But Heilman's autograph is highly sought after and really expensive, actually. Um, this one's about $1,000, give or take, to get a Harry Heilman like this. And so, not cheap at all. But uh, I didn't pay that much. I got it a long time ago. So, there is Harry Heilman. Easily one of the favorite autographs that I have in my collection is this one of Satchel Paige. Uh, this is a very cool business card that he had from the Springfield Redbirds. He was the vice president of the team. And on his business card, he would sign it. This, this is a very common Satchel Paige autograph to acquire. Still not necessarily cheap. It'll run you two to three hundred bucks. But... I sent this one into PSA DNA. I thought it would look beautiful slabbed, and I was right. Uh, it came back a gem mint 10. So Satchel would sign it. But as cool as that is, what's really neat about this item is if you turn it over, it's got Satchel's rules for a good life. And if you want to pause this video and check those out and read those, you will um, learn some really cool rules for the good life by Satchel Page. So... Here we are at number 17, Satchel Page. When you talk about executives that are in the Hall of Fame, there's not many more impressive of their careers and what they did for baseball than this guy right here, Branch Rickey. He instituted with the St. Louis Cardinals the farm system. He created that. He introduced Jackie Robinson to the baseball world and had the boldness to be willing to um, integrate baseball. So he is kind of in his own world of great executives of all time. And what this is, I love pieces like this. When you get executives, the most common place you're going to find them is on checks or, or letters or things like that. And this is a great letter. I'm going to kind of pan up here. Let's see. You've got uh, on Brooklyn Dodgers letterhead, written in 1949, so Jackie was on the team then. Games at Ebbets Field, so it's still with Brooklyn. It's a letter to Walter O'Malley, who is also a Hall of Famer. And the content of the letter is pretty simple. I think you'll be interested in the results of the draft by and from the Brooklyn organization, and I'm enclosing a memorandum covering the subject. So, uh just not exactly, you know, titillating material, but still it's a letter signed by Branch Rickey to another Hall of Famer on Dodgers letterhead. That's, to me, that is just really, really cool. Branch Rickey. Showing off back-to-back -back letters here. Uh, this is definitely one of my favorite pieces. This is a letter, uh, another letter from Paul, uh, just went totally blank, Paul Kerr, who is the president of the baseball National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum in Cooperstown, a letter that he had written, and I'm going to scan up a little bit, to Rogers Hornsby Hall of Famer, and asking if he was going to be able to attend the ceremony that year in 1962. Uh, as you can read, Rogers Hornsby politely declined, Hopefully he wanted to do that in the future. Uh, unfortunately, Rogers Hornsby died uh, in January of 63. So, you know, seven, eight months later, he had passed away. So he was obviously not in very good health. But this letter is my first letter that I've had encapsulated by PSA DNA. It's a mint nine on the autograph. I can't really scan up to show that to you, but trust me, it is. I have a video on this not too long ago if you want to go see me talk about this piece in much greater detail, but there you go, Rogers Hornsby. Next up is an autograph from the left arm of God, Sandy Koufax. 
And what I did here was I have a whole run and I have a video on this, but a whole run that I did with a guy who created these customs for me based on the 1983 Donruss Hall of Fame hero set as a template. And what I took was a bunch of otherwise boring three by five cards and I sent them to him to create cut autographs with the idea that I wanted the whole autograph to be visible in the window. I wanted to use uh, some type of cool painting picture in the insert, in the inset, and I wanted to just make these look as much like 83 Donruss Hall of Fame Heroes cards as I could. And so I took this as a Sandy Koufax as one example it's really just an opportunity to show Sandy Koufax's autograph and in my collection. What I did on the back was, I uh, will turn this over. I created a, you know, what the back looks like, the design. I also um, wrote all of the different things about the player and then put a little emblem down for the Hall of Fame, one of one, and my name, Moynihan Collection. So, these are not ever going to leave my collection, but so this is just an example of showing this little subset for number 14, Sandy Koufax. Next up, we have Napoleon Larry Lajoie, Nap Lajoie, uh, just an amazing Hall of Famer. He's another one of those guys. If you don't know about his career, you need to go look it up. Uh, this is a very cool 3x5 card, essentially, dated by him in November 4th, 1955. So, very old signature here. It's certified by PSA DNA in a near mint to mint 8 condition. Just an amazing autograph. About a $500 autograph for this one. So, there you go. Nap Lajoie. Really neat postcard signed by Jimmy Fox is next. Uh, I have a lot of postcards that have been encapsulated and that's a very common thing within my collection because on a lot of these players, that's kind of the way you're gonna find their autographs and Jimmy Fox is no exception. I love the uh, fluidity of his signature. I mean, it's just beautiful. And the double X's on the end of his name, just so cool. That was one of his nicknames, double X. And this is a PSA DNA, DNA Mint 9 autograph of Jimmy Fox. There's a whole lot to like about this next piece. This is Willie Mays, and his signature on here is bold. It's beautiful. It's on a Perez Steel Masterworks card. I mean, everything works about this. It's He placed the autograph perfect on the card. If I, if I kind of look up here, you'll see that it's also graded by PSA DNA. It's a Jim Mint 10 autograph, and God, I would hope so. It's a really clean maze autograph, and he, he's not known for always being clean in terms of his uh, autographs. So there you go, Willie Mays. The Splendid Splinter is next, and although I have I don't know, 10 or 12 Ted Williams autographs. Uh, I love this one a lot, and I thought I would use it as my example for Ted Williams. Just another 83 Donruss Hall of Fame heroes. It's really, Ted has a really huge signature, and so him compressing it to fit on this card is very interesting. It's a, uh, if I actually got this one graded, it wouldn't grade well because his signature comes off the bottom of the card on the first T, but this is uh, at least PSA DNA authentic and slabbed up to protect it. So just love this Ted Williams autograph. It's impossible to really show any top 25 or top anything Hall of Fame autographs without having a signature of the Mick. Mickey Mantle, of course, was one of the greatest players of all time. But what Mickey did was he started making autographs more for, he, he turned it into a business uh, with card shows in the early 90s and, you know, or 80s, I should say, actually. 
and he started making it a business where players could make more money and do more. And so we owe a lot of the ability for us autograph collectors to have ample supply of these Hall of Famers to Mickey Mantle. And this is a beautiful Perez Steel. I'll pan it up. You can see this is a Mint 9 PSA DNA autograph. I have a Jim Mint 10 Mantle on a 83 Donners Hall of Fame Heroes, ironically. But I'm just trying to show a few different types of items that are in my collection with Perez Steels being a huge part of it just because how pretty they are and how great autographs look on them. And this is no exception. Mickey Mantle. This next piece is special to me and fits is, is, is so high in this in my collection in terms of ranking because of how much I think this player is underrated for what he did for the game. And that's Mel Ott. And uh, just an amazing player back for the New York Giants. And went back on uh, John McGraw's teams. Just really, really led those teams. This is a newspaper clipping, newspaper photo. And as I scroll up, you'll see that it's uh, PSA DNA certified, but it's only an excellent Mint 6. Uh, the autograph is really tough to see. It's in pen, but it's uh, faded pretty well. You can see it right um, right down here is his autograph. But I just love Mel Ott and what he means to the game. So he's in my top 10, Mel Ott. Now for one of the greatest players ever, certainly for the Pirates is, uh, this is ironic. It's signed by Roberto Clemente and Bob Veal, who is a very solid pitcher for them. But obviously, Roberto Clemente is the star of this piece. Uh, it's a big cut, like a big album page or something that was cut up. And I sent it into PSA DNA. It came back uh, eight and a half in terms of the autograph grade, which I think is really good. Clemente's autograph is all over the place, and it's really hard to read it's unusual looking and yet beautiful and elegant and i love it so there is roberto clemente coming in at number seven how about next we show a little jackie robinson this is a government postcard that i picked up at the 2014 national in cleveland and at the time, it was just PSA DNA slabbed authentic. I sent it in to have them assign a numerical grade to it, and it came back a seven, which is surprising because the signature itself is quite bold. There's a whole lot going on with the piece itself. There's some damage in the bottom right, and there's, you know, mail marks on the middle of it. But other than that, it really presents well. I love having this in my collection. It's my only Jackie Robinson autograph, so I'm very happy to own it. And he's, of course, Jackie Robinson. What else is there to say? So we start off the top five with the pitcher with the most wins in history. So much so, so much of a great player that he was that uh, they named the best pitcher every year award after him. And that's Cy Young. What a great piece. This is a recent acquisition for me in my collection. Uh, got it at an auction house and it's a mint nine index card of Cy Young. Good way to start the top five. Here's a piece that I literally just got yesterday and actually prompted the idea for me to do this video. And it's the Walter Johnson envelope. There you see the 100 year anniversary commemorative stamp up on the top right. It's got a postmark of August 28th, 1939, which was pointed out to me by Ed Wesker Griff. So shout out to him that um, that was four days before Germany invaded Poland and World War II began. So that's how old this piece is. Another uh, YouTuber asked about why there's no zip codes and zip codes really didn't start at least go nationwide until the early 60s so back in the day you could just 
write down somebody's name, their address, and the city and town that they lived in and state. So there you go. Uh, what a beautiful piece here. The bold Walter Johnson. It's authenticated by JSA and it's got a nine autograph grade on the back. So there you go, Walter Johnson. We're now into the top three and arguably three of the greatest players ever represented in the autographs that I'm going to show here, starting with <coughs> Ty Cobb. Uh, 356 batting average for his career kind of says it all. I think that's right. Um, this is a check that I've had for a long time. Uh, these checks are relatively common on the market. You can get them. Uh, there's pretty much every auction. There's a Ty Cobb check for sale and you can find them on eBay and stuff like that. This one's graded by PSA DNA and near mint to mint eight. I bought it this way, which is good. I wanted a legit one. And as I, move down here and show more of the check. You can see it's made out to Pacific Telephone and Telegraph. There's a whole bunch of cancellation things from the bank and it doesn't take away terribly from his autograph. This one's from 1955 in November and in his traditional green ink, that's very common to see Ty Cobb signing things and writing things in green ink. So. There is Tyrus Raymond Cobb, number three. My second to last item in my top 25 Hall of Fame autograph showcase is a piece that I picked up several years ago at an auction house. And I do really enjoy multi-signed pieces. Uh, this was unusual because it was a multi-signed piece that included both Hall of Famers and non-Hall of Famers. And that's not something I usually am attracted to, but in this case, given the subject matter, it really uh, was a piece I, I just had to have. And so you'll notice there's five signatures total on this piece. George Selkirk, uh, Ben Chapman, at the very bottom, Frank Crozetti, all members of the Yankees. This is, this is a piece probably signed in the late 20s, could be as 1927, during their historic run as a team. But the two autographs that I really wanted this for are right in the middle, and that's Tony Lazeri, who was part of Murderer's Row, Hall of Famer, very, very hard autograph, uh, much harder to find and more rare than the main subject of this piece, which is, of course, the Iron Horse, Lou Gehrig. And these, the two autographs are, are really great. I'd love to send this in and get it graded, but hard to do that. I just love the piece as it is and I kind of don't want to screw with it. It's just gorgeous. Uh, eventually I'll get a Lou Gehrig, you know, where it's just Lou Gehrig signature, but I, I'm really happy to have this in my collection. It comes in at number two on my top 25 Hall of Fame autographs. Seriously, do you guys think there was any doubt as to what autograph would be number one in my top 25 Hall of Fame autographs collection? I think this would be number one in most people's collections, and that's this awesome Babe Ruth cut that I, I think I got it last year and then sent it to Garrett at uh, Slab City Sports Cards to get sent off to PSA to get it graded. It was already authenticated by PSA. I had a full letter for it and I just wanted to get the autograph graded and it came back a gem mint 10, which turned about a three to $4,000 autograph into about a seven to $8,000 autograph. And so it's the crown jewel of my collection of my hall of fame autograph collection, just because of, you know, it's a beautiful piece. It's, a Jim Mint 10 autograph of Ruth, which are not something you find every day. And it's simple and I just absolutely love it and so happy to have it as part of my collection. So there you go, guys. There's my top 25 Hall of Fame autographs. Please let me know what you think. I hope everybody enjoyed this video. I know it was really long and if you stayed till the end, thank you very much for watching and everybody just keep collecting.